Hi, this is Marcus Neto from Bluefish Design Studio, and it's been a couple of years since I recorded my last uh, YouTube demo of Expression Engine, and I felt like it was time. Um, so the last uh, YouTube video that I did was using version 2.5.5 of Expression Engine, and this is using 2.9.0. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to have a .1, but um, anyway, so it's 2.9. You can see that in the footer here. Um, and there's not a whole lot that's changed about the way that Expression Engine allows you to build sites, um, but there are a few additional uh, pieces of functionality for developers um, that I probably won't go into as part of this demo, um, just because this is kind of meant to be an overview for people that have no idea why they might want to um, look into Expression Engine. So. Um, but look forward, uh, you know, to hearing maybe a little bit about um, some of the new some of the new stuff that they've added. So, anyway, uh, this is uh, the front end of my demo site. Uh, it's been a long time since I've updated it. Um, actually, it's still using Twitter Bootstrap. I don't remember which version. So, if it looks familiar, that's probably why. You'll notice that we have a carousel on the. Um, the hero section here with some images embedded. We've got some news articles that are pulled in. If I click on uh, view details, it takes me to the news section and opens up uh, the article that I was um, was looking at. I also have some recent posts over here and I have some categories. So if I click on interviews, it shows me the items that are um, categorized as interviews. And if I um, click on any of those items, it uh, brings it up. You'll notice that I'm not using uh, the standard uh, Expression Engine uh, comments I like uh, Discuss. I just think it's uh, easier to maintain and um, you don't have so many issues with spam and stuff like that. Now, I went, pay attention to the uh, title tag here. So Expression Engine rocks, they use superheroes. Um, you'll notice that the title of the article is different than the title tag. And I'll show you a little bit, um, show you in a little bit how um, we can make uh, Expression Engine really just awesome for giving users um, control of their SEO. So um, if I go to the deals section, not to make you too hungry, but you'll notice that um, we have a title, we have a price, we have a description, we have um, some limitations and we have an image. And I'll show you in the back end that each one of these little tidbits of, of information is actually a different custom field, which makes it really easy for the end user who may be net non-technical. It makes it really easy for them to update the site. They don't have to worry about formatting. They don't have to worry about floating that image left. They don't have to worry about margin. Um, the developer handles all of that for them and they just enter in straight uh, text and you know they might want to format a little bit but for the most part they don't have to worry about the complexities of page layout under media we have some audio and if i click on this you may or may not be able to hear this but it's the uh, uh, marriage of figaro um, and uh, so we have the ability to kind of bring in uh, audio files and um, this is using uh, a javascript library i can't remember it off the top of my head um, but I'll, I'll try and figure that out and uh, add it later in the video. Um, if I go to the photo gallery, this is one thing that I've changed since the, uh, the last time I did the video. Um, we've standardized on an add-on by DevDemon uh, called Channel Images. And Channel Images is awesome because it allows for bulk uploading of images. And it also um, resizes those images on the fly and allows you to do a lot of really cool things with them. So it makes the experience for end users really simple. And I'll show you that in the back end. But if I click on the gallery, you'll see that I still have you know a lot of the same functionality. I can arrow through these. I can actually uh, use my mouse and click through them. If I click out of them, um, it uh, it disables them. If I go into the next one, you know, I have same functionality. Um, you know, kind of makes these uh, images. Uh, come to life. If I go to the video section, there's two things that I wanted to show you here. In the last video, I had this, which was um, an Expression Engine video um, used by LS Lab because this uh, this demo actually came about when I was still the product evangelist at LS Lab. Um, so this video uh, was created for LS Lab, 
And basically this is the self-hosted version. And I'll show you the difference between this and these YouTube versions up here. But so this one is actually a file on our um, server. In this case, it's my local machine. And you'll see I can play it back and it responds really quickly. Um, and then you'll also notice that I have these items in here from YouTube. So these are videos that I've recorded, um, you know, demos of how we've put together pages um, in Expression Engine. And um, basically this is using the uh, Dev Demon add-on for channel videos. And if I click on this, you'll notice it's YouTube, but it's pulling directly from YouTube and allowing you to watch it here on the same page, which is really awesome because you offload all of those, um, all the, the hosting capabilities, you know, go straight to somebody else and not to your server, which when you're talking about video files, they can be quite large and it's oftentimes um, detrimental to your, your wallet <laughs> to host videos on your hosting. Your host uh, more than likely isn't set up uh, to be um, a video uh, delivery mechanism. So um, if I go to the rotator, you'll notice that these are the same images and the carousel on the front page, but these are just in a standard rotator. So this shows you how one, when you enter content into expression engine, you really only have to enter it in once and that content can be used in multiple ways. And I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, store locations just shows you uh, some of the capabilities. So I, I have the ability to um, have a listing of stores, right? So I can have Daphne, I can have Plano. If I click on one, I can give the address, I can give the phone number, I can give the store number. I can even use some of that content in a header um, or headline rather, uh, so that it, you know, it kind of customizes it for that location. Um, and I'll show you how all that's done uh, when we get to the control panel. Um, I can have an FAQ uh, with tabs. These are driven by categories. Um, so I can, I can show uh, different FAQs within the same uh, channel. And we'll talk about channels in just a little bit. And then I can just drive them based on categories. And then privacy policy in terms of use, I, I put in here because I wanted to show you that you're not bound by uh, Expression Engine's normal uh, URL structure. So the way that Expression Engine would normally want to see the URL structure is something along the lines of domain name.com uh, slash template group slash template slash entry URL. Um, but they have this module in Expression Engine called Pages, which allows you to override that. So if you have, um, in this case, we have a channel called Miscellaneous and we've enabled pages and any of the entries in miscellaneous, we can go to an additional tab in the uh, publish page and specify the URL that we want you know, that page to be, and then uh, Expression Engine will recognize it. So I could make this URL anything I want. I can make it privacy hyphen one, two, three hyphen policy um, or whatever, and it would still be respected. Um, and so it's, that's really nice, especially for, you know, things like privacy policy in terms of use, it makes it really uh, simple to, to make that a simple URL. Um, so all that said, you know, this is a, this is a fairly plain Jane site, but I think you'll uh, see here in just a minute that um, Expression Engine kind of uh, is a really robust backend for a site, even as simple as this. And when you get into more complex sites, it can be uh, really handy. So this is the, um, the control panel for Expression Engine. And um, the very first thing that I normally show people is that Expression Engine is a multi-channel uh, system, unlike uh, some CMSs uh, who shall remain nameless. Um, and what that means is that for every type of content that I have, I can create a new channel that is specifically geared towards handling that content. And then I can assign fields to that channel. And what that allows is it gives me um, a publish page that is catered towards that content so that the user doesn't have to enter in content into one big text area and then format it themselves. So for instance, in this site, I have channels for audio deals, FAQ, image rotator, miscellaneous news, photo gallery, store locator, and video, all of the different sections that we see here in the, in the, uh, 
main navigation. Okay. And so what I've, what I've there then done is I have uh, created channel fields. Uh, these are all the field groups um, for those different channels. And if I open up, say, audio, you'll notice that I have audio description. I have audio file. If I go to deals, I have deal image, deal description, deal limitations, and deal price. And if I go to uh, store locator, I have street address, store number, and store phone number. Okay, so every channel has a different set of fields that are assigned to it. And the way that that manifests itself is that if I go to content publish audio, you'll notice that all of these are going to have a title and they're all going to have a URL title. And then I have the description and the audio file uh, linking capability that I specified in, for this channel. And if I go to deals, you'll notice that I have still the title and URL title, but I have the ability to link an image a description, a limitation, and I have the ability to put a price. And then finally, uh, just for, for grins, if I take you to store locator, I give uh, the entry a title, a URL title is automatically generated. And then um, I have the ability to specify a street address, um, line in one and two, city, state, you know, zip code, and then the store number and the phone number that um, that I showed you on the front end of the site. So. So basically what I'm doing is I'm customizing expression engine for each site. So if a, a site has a staff section, um, then I may still have a, a space for linking an image. I may have, a, you know, a, a content field similar to what I have on the audio here for a bio. And I may have individual text uh, lines, you know, these um, these text lines, uh, you know, so that I can enter in an email address, uh, maybe a Twitter account, uh, uh, you know, website address and so on and so forth. So I can cater that to, you know, to the site and give them the fields that they need. Um, and this is extremely powerful. So what this does is it breaks up this, um, all of this content into usable chunks. And this idea was originally brought about um, well, actually, Expression Engine's been doing this for 10 years, um, but the idea was brought into the news by NPR. So there's an article um, that some of the folks at NPR wrote that basically outlines um, the create once, publish everywhere mentality of you know building websites. And they wanted to be able to create a website that had small, reusable chunks of information in it so that um, when they were um, allowing people access to that information that they could limit what those people had access to based on um, their relationship with them. So if they were, say, maybe just a regular member um, of, their, um, you know, of their group, then maybe they could uh, republish um, headlines and you know, like maybe like a little summary. But if they may be paid a little bit more, then they get access to more of the story and the images and so on and so forth. So they it really allowed them to customize. Now they went with Drupal and they basically, if I remember correctly, they went with Drupal and they basically built this, you know, custom system. Uh, and the truth is that they probably could have done it a lot faster and a lot easier um, using Expression Engine. So, but anyway, so if I go in here, and I go into edit and I show you the audio uh, entries and I open one of these up. You see that I have, you know, a description here and I have an audio file uh, submitted. If I go into the deals, you'll see that um, I have a title. And so let's um, pull up deals. I have a title, right? Uh, well, actually, this is the get a $10 pizza with every license. Um, and then I have the image, I have a description, and then I have the deal limitations. So specifically on the deal limitations, notice that there's no formatting, but if I come over here that the, the uh, limitations are italicized. So I can control with the HTML code because I'm embedding these um, custom fields in individually, I can control the styling and the placement of uh, these items. Um, and that's, you know, also true here. So like the deal price is at the very bottom, but you notice that I put it as today's low, low price of nine ninety nine, um, and that that gets put right underneath the headline. Um, so if I go to, um, photo gallery, you'll notice that I have three entries. 
just like I do on the uh, on the page here. So I've got one, two, three. And if I um, click into one of those, you'll notice that we're using channel images here. And basically what that allows me to do is I can go in and I can select, let's see if I have another image that I can add to the, ah, here's an image of me with the General Lee while on vacation last week. So if I go and select that image, and I can select multiples, but I'm just gonna select this one for now and I click on open, what it does is it automatically starts updating or uploading it and it resizes it. And then, you know, I, I don't really have to do anything. So I'm, I'm done. Um, if I don't want this image to be part of this gallery, I can now delete it. Um, and it'll ask me, do I want to do that? And of course I say yes. If I want to edit these, I can. Um, I have a lot of functionality here about being able to rotate it, um, flip it, crop it, you know, do all kinds of stuff. Um, if I want um, one of the images to be, uh, you'll notice that here, this is the Chicago skyline. I was flying in and um, please don't tell the FAA on me. But um, anyway, I, I have this image as the uh, cover, right? So if I drag this one over and then I save this, then when I refresh this page, that image that I drug into the first position is the cover. And actually channel images has um, a button, the star, if I wanted to, I could specify that no matter what order these are in, um, the one that has the star is the cover. Um, I just don't have that coded. I don't have this coded that way. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to show was the, uh, the video section. So if I go here, uh, you'll see that this is a self-hosted video and I, I put all the stuff into one publish page. Um, just because it, it's easier that way to show you in a demo, but I probably wouldn't mix these two, right? I wouldn't mix self-hosted and YouTube. I would probably choose one or the other and go that way. But um, so here I have a self-hosted, you know, MP4 file. It's located, you know, on my local machine since that's what we're, we're working with here. I have a JPEG image that gets uh, displayed prior to playback. I have a description and then I have this, um, this video, uh, channel video field from Dev Demon. So if I go here and I search for Expression Engine uh, Demo, notice it's pulling back. Um, I've specified that I want it to pull back from Vimeo as well as YouTube. And so um, you'll notice that here's another video uh, that I've done. Here's another one. If I click on the plus you'll notice that that disappears and it comes down here and it gets, um, it gets added to my entry. And if I just click on submit for this, then when I come back to the video page, I should have, um, I should have an additional video for that. Now, um, this is, it was added as, as part of this self-hosted entry. So that's why we're seeing the double there. But, um, you'll see that, you know, that's pretty stinking easy. I mean, most times, uh, you know, that it, it doesn't happen like that. It's not that easy with systems. And one of the thing that one of the things that I really like about Expression Engine is that the workflow for all of the different types of content is the same. So I just go to publish and then whichever channel I'm wanting to publish in. So if I want to publish a new news article, then I would just click on, you know, news and I can enter in my my post. I have a, a WYSIWYG. Uh, so I can format, I can do bold, italicize, strike through, um, you know, lists and so on and so forth. Um, and, uh, when I click on submit, it's the, it's posted. If I want to, you know, publish a, a new FAQ, I just go to the FAQ and I put in my content and I click on submit and it's posted. So the workflow is the same. It's just the type of content, um, is, is different. So, um, there is one thing that I did want to show, remember in the news section, I told you that um, we have the ability to make uh, these really SEO friendly. So because we have the ability to create custom fields for uh, each of the channels, I can do something like this. So I've got a title here, um, I've got my post, and then I have my title tag, right? So right now if I go to um, Ellis Lab gives all users, uh, all of its users bacon for life, you'll see that Bacon is delicious is the is the title. If I remove that, actually, if I remove that and click on submit, 
you'll notice that um, it defaults back to the title. And the way that we do that um, is just using some conditional logic and the templates, which is really super simple. I mean, it took me about a minute to uh, type this out. And basically what you're doing as a developer, I'm checking to make sure that there's no content in this title tag field. And if there isn't, then I'm displaying the title. If there is, then I'm displaying what's in this, what's in this uh, field. So, um, and if I come back here, you'll notice that it just goes back to bacon is delicious because I put it back in place. Um, so that's, that's pretty handy, especially for um, sites that really care about, well, all sites care about SEO, but really want to have that finite control over their, um, over their title tags. You can even do something similar for um, meta description and things of that nature. Um, anything that they may need for uh, that would help them with their SEO, um, you could just create a new custom field for it and be done. There are some add-ons that um, add that to another tab. So for instance, if I was to go in here, instead of having just date categories, options, and pages, I may have another tab here that allows me to put, you know, all that stuff on that. And then, you know, and then it, that add on kind of handles it. Um, and if you do a search over on Devote, uh, you can, you can find those. So, but, uh, you'll notice here that I also have the ability to specify, um, an entry date. And what this means is if I change this entry date to say 724, it won't show up on the site until uh, 724 at 256. So it's queued in the system, but it's not yet live on the site, which is kind of handy for you know things that you might want to publish at night or on the weekend. Um, you can do the same with expiration dates. So for instance, we've worked with some churches in the past where they have um, graphics and, and you know information about maybe church services for Christmas. And they want them to go live, you know, maybe the, the Monday after uh, Thanksgiving. And they want them to stay live until, you know, maybe the, the Monday um, after Christmas. And so, you know, it's just really a handy way of controlling when something appears on your site. Um, in this news section, I have uh, categories and I can actually have um, any amount of categories uh, that I might want and I can add category groups for each of the different channels. So the categories for the news section can be different than the categories for the FAQ and so on and so forth. Um, I can specify um, whether I want this open or closed. Uh, closing it will actually um, remove it from the site and I can actually add additional statuses. So I can put, or stat I, I guess, I can put a status of draft in there if I want to and um, and so on and so forth. Um, and I can make an entry sticky. So if I want it to stay at the top, um, it will do so. And finally, I think I mentioned the uh, privacy policy bit. If I go, actually, this might be easier if I go to the, the actual privacy policy. Um, so the URL title of this would normally be, um, remember the, the natural URL structure of expression engine is domain name.com slash template group slash template slash URL title or entry URL, however you want to call it. And in this case, it's just domain name.com slash privacy policy. So we're taking out the template group and the template out of that mix. Um, and the way that we do that is we just have enabled pages as a module and pages ask you for the URL that you want it to be. And I've just spe specified slash privacy policy and I've told it which template I wanted to use, which is the miscellaneous index uh, template. So it'll actually remove miscellaneous index and oftentimes the index would get dropped anyway. So in this case, it should be miscellaneous slash privacy policy, but expression engine is allowing us to override that. So it's just slash privacy policy, um, which is kind of handy. Um, so that's, that's basically channels and you know, the, the main um, selling point of expression engine is that ease of use for end users. Um, you know, if I want to um, make it super easy for somebody, I just tell them that publish is for publishing new content and edit is for editing existing content. And for the most part, you know, people get it. You know, they, they may have some issues with like, you know, if they've never used a WYSIWYG before, they may have some issues with like, how do I, how do I um, upload a file and link that to some text in a, in a field? And, you know, we just record a little video like I'm doing with this 
and you know it, it it's usually you know they they watch it and they you know smack their forehead and they feel you know like okay well i got it you know um, so it makes things super easy now i'm going to go into some uh, slightly more technical things um, for those of you that are uh, developers or that have you know some they have some more technical knowledge okay so the des design section is where we actually store all of the templates for expression engine and so you can see here that we have all the template groups that I've mentioned before. So the audio deals, blah, blah, blah. We've also got one for includes. So I can actually include things like my footer, my header, um, and my head, my uh, navigation. Um, and then, you know, I've got my main page. And you'll notice here, this is um, actually handy. Um, you'll notice that I've got, you know, some includes. I've hard-coded my title uh, in here, my title tag. Um, and then this is where Expression Engine gets really kind of fun is that you can mix the information that you're pulling in from different channels into a single template. So I've got my Expression Engine code here for, for pulling in the image rotator images. Um, and you'll notice some uh, conditional logic in here just to, you know, to handle things like active state and stuff like that. And then down below here, I actually have my Expression Engine uh, code for the news articles that are on the displayed on the home page and I've, um, I've I'm using a plugin called word limit which allows me to limit the amount of words that show uh, for a particular entry so I've limited that to 50 um, we've also used some other ones that limit it by character and um, and that really you know that that's nice too because if you're working within a confined space then um, then it will it will hard stop at you know the amount of characters that you've specified so but for the most part this is just standard html um, there's nothing really complicated about this there's no php or anything like that there is some javascript um, but even that isn't terribly complex i mean it's you know it's a carousel um, and so you know that's pretty uh, that's pretty self-explanatory and then when it comes to things like uh, the video because i had two different things uh, mixed in there um, you'll notice that we've got some links to some specific uh, JavaScript that we need. So because of the way that Expression Engine works, we can actually just include the JavaScript files for the video stuff on the video section. So we don't have to include those JavaScript files on every single page. So that speeds your site up and it uh, makes it less uh, likely that you're going to have collisions between uh, different uh, libraries. Um, that used to be a real big problem when I was working with some other CMSs. Um, and so, and I I've recently, somebody asked me to take a Joomla site and put it into Expression Engine. And I was, I was saddened by the amount of JavaScript files um, and CSS files that I had to include just in, in general, because I, I didn't have, they didn't have the budget to really do it the right way. And so basically what we did was we just took everything and threw it in, but it was amazing what, Joomla, um, at the, you know, for this particular site, not saying that they're all like that, but for this particular site, I mean, there were literally like 20 to 25 JavaScript and CSS files that were included on every single page. And it doesn't have to be that way. <clears throat> and Google certainly is, um, you know, is, is, uh, deducting your ranking based on your speed and every file that you have to download is, um, is going to slow you down. So, Excuse me, just one second. So what you'll notice down here is that we, where we get into our um, expression engine code that we're opening uh, the, you know, the, the, you know, the communication with the database. So, and we're actually telling, um, we're actually telling it that we want it to pull information from the video channel. We want it to order by date, sort it descending, and that we want to limit want to limit it by um, the last five uh, entries. And then we have some conditional logic in here that say, you know, if the um, this particular uh, field has content in it, then go ahead and do this. So we've got the video tag, um, we've specified a width and height, we've got the source, which is the file that's self-hosted. We're telling it what the type is. Um, we're giving it an ID so that it can be styled appropriately. Poster is the image that gets displayed beforehand. And then, you know, some additional stuff just to finish out that player. 
Um, if you look at the next line, it's actually, you know, same thing. If this, uh, you know, the, the channel, uh, video, uh, field is, uh, has some content, then we're going to, you know, do some very similar things. So we're going to wrap it with a, uh, div, you know, with a video container class, um, which just allows us to apply things like margin and stuff like that so that they're not all bunched up together. Um, and then we're going to, uh, open up a, a, a direct, you know, call to the database for that add on so that we can grab some information out and we're going to, you know, tell it the, the entry ID so that it knows which one. And then here, here's this, this is the magic right here. So video embed code and right, boom, it's going to, from that little bit, it's going to take all of this other information and we can actually, um, we can actually, uh, and that's the video embed code as it is given on YouTube. Um, and you can actually, there's a lot of other fields that are usable with channel video. So it's, it has the ability to pull in like the description from YouTube. It has the ability to pull in, you know, uh, who recorded it, you know, what the duration is. I think you can even pull in things like comments and stuff like that. So it gets a little bit ridiculous, um, the functionality that you, you've got there. And oh, by the way, did I mention that channel video is free? <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's really nice. And the installation of channel video is um, pretty simple. And once you figure you know, these types of things out, you know, oftentimes um, you end up reusing a lot of this code. Um, because it's, you know, it never changes. Like this will always be, unless um, Brad and the folks over at Dev Demon, you know, change something drastically, this will always be the way that you pull in that embed code. So, and then you see the, uh, the, the field for the description of the video and some uh, JavaScript down here just to um, allow this self-hosted um, video to play. So, but that's templates. So again, you've got template groups. You can have as many template groups as you want. Um, you can have as many templates as you want. So for instance, most of these just have one. Um, I think things like news, uh, nope, it doesn't have two. This normally we'll have sites that, you know, like in the blog, or, oh, there it is. So in the news section, you notice we have two. Um, and, you know, depending on how we code up the site, we may or may not have um, two in the news section, we can oftentimes put conditionals in the index, um, that allow it to handle all of the code, uh, for index and article, but you know, you have that ability. So if you have a URL structure that you really need it to follow, then, you know, you can just go ahead and, and, uh, create the template group and create the template. And oftentimes that's enough to get you where you need to go. There's a lot of other stuff up here, um, including the, the one thing that I really like is this ability to um, store templates as files. So if I, um, if I open up my uh, sites, you'll see, you know, 29 assets and then templates. Um, here are my template groups and my templates. And so if I'm, uh, if I want, I can actually um, open these in sublime text and I can edit these uh, here instead of in the browser and it makes things, you know, quite nice. So, um, all right. So moving along, one of the things, uh, that, uh, I really like about expression engine two is the availability of, uh, different add-ons. Okay. So add-ons encompasses all of these various things, whether it's a module, an accessory extension field type, or a plugin. Um, and you can see here, we've got some modules installed. So we've got, you know, backup pro, which is uh, part of all of our installs at bluefish. Um, you've got channel images, channel videos. Um, we've got deploy helper, which is helpful if you're looking to move, um, sites from a dev environment to, uh, a new server. Um, you, there are other ways that you can handle that with config files and stuff like that. But deploy helper has, you know, has always been my way of doing things cause it's just simple. Um, and then we've got Freeform from, uh, from Soul Space, which allows us to uh, create forms and accept the, uh, the content. I don't think I have a form on the site. Um, but anyway, then there's Pages, which I've shown you already. There's Updater, which allows us to um, update Expression Engine quite easily. It's still not something that I would allow clients to do um, because you have to download all of the add-ons and make sure that um, all of the, the add-ons are uh, compliant with the latest version of expression engine. And oftentimes 
there's a lag. So if Expression Engine releases, you know, 2.10, then there may be a month lag or something like that before all of the add-ons are updated. Um, and then Wigwam, which is uh, by uh, Pixel and Tonic, and it's the it's our editor of choice. So uh, the last thing that I'll probably show you is um, is uh, the members' capabilities of Expression Engine. So some systems only allow you to have a single uh, member group. And that member group basically gets access to everything. So it's an all or nothing. You're either a member or you're a guest, right? Well, with Expression Engine, I can have uh, out of the box, I have five. So I have super admins and they have access to everything that you see here. I have band, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't want somebody to even be able to access the site, you throw them in this band uh, box if you will, and they can't, they'll, they won't even be able to get to the site. It like sends them off to never, never land. Guests is just anybody that's viewing the site. And then members, um, is if you have some membership functionality, um, then you can, uh, add people to the members, uh, member group, and they may have some additional access to the site. So maybe they can post articles or maybe they can see certain sections of the site that weren't, um, readily available to just guests. And pending is what those members are. So they may apply to be a member. And so they go into a pending group. And then when you approve them, if you, if you have that locked down, when you approve them, then they go into the members member group. But the cool thing is this, I can create new member groups. So I can create as many of these as I want. And the permissions are fairly specific. So if I want I can go in here and I can say, I, I want them to have access to the control panel. I want them to be able to get to the content section. I want them to be able to publish and edit uh, new content. And I want them to have access to the files. And then I can actually even go down and um, specify which, uh, which channels I want them to have access to. So maybe I only want them to be able to enter in new deals then I can do that. So when the person logged in, literally all they would see is this content button and they would click on it and they would see publish, but all they would have over here is deals. Um, so it gets fairly, um, you know, finite with its reach, which is really nice. Um, there's a number of times where we've created sites for people and they want to have um, editors have access to certain sections, but they don't want to give them access to everything just in case they mess something up. So we lock down all the other sections and we give them the ability to, to publish and, and edit. And that's pretty much it. And then you can even go as far as saying, you know, they, um, down here where it's channel posting privileges, um, maybe they can, uh, delete their own entries, but they can't delete, you know, other people's entries, right. Um, which is this one here. So, you know, it's, it's really nice. So you can give them certain capabilities and, um, and not others, which is really handy. So, but, um, that's it. Um, I think as part of this uh, demo, I don't want to go, uh, too much further into, you know, creating channels and, and stuff like that. Um, I think, you know, just knowing what those are is, uh, is handy. So, but I do hope this has been helpful. If, um, if I can add anything to this, or if you, I can answer any questions, don't hesitate to uh, email me. Uh, my email address uh, is marcus at bluefishds.com. And um, if, you, uh, if you just want to say hi, or if you want to um, maybe get some more information, um, then just let me know. Thank you.